hey everybody welcome back to the channel this is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews back finally to talk some more Expanse Season 4 I realize these videos are a lot later than a lot of you guys would have wanted but unfortunately the channel I've been going through a lot of identity issues on the channel and uh, just kind of feeling really bummed out at the numbers that I saw for the first five episodes uh, the ch I just my channel just kind of like was getting views and no growth and it just got me really bummed out and uh, some other personal issues and nah, 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 where nah, nobody wants to fucking hear it right now right it's just like get to talking about the expanse uh, so we did have our contest there was a winner I want to thank my uh, uh, Annette Louisa who was the winner of the contest. She did get her Miller t-shirt in the mail. She emailed me to confirm it. Showed me a picture of it hanging next to her Expanse uh, picture that she has or uh, like a painting that she has. So congratulations again, Annette. Uh, it was really nice to do that. We are still doing the second contest. So if anybody that didn't win the first one, uh, you leave a comment here or in one, if you left a comment in one of the past episodes, we still have your name in the hat that I'm I'm pointing at off screen <laughs> to win the uh, either season one, two, or three Blu-ray DVD uh, or DVD of the Expanse of your choice. Uh, you have to be a subscriber, and you have to leave a comment on any of the videos uh, for the season four. So can't remember if you put one in. You know, go ahead and do one uh, up until episode ten. Um, and again, I'm sorry that I, I it's taken me a long time to get to this. My dad has already watched The Expanse <laughs> Season 4. And this is me just now watching Season 4, Episode 6 called Displacement. Uh, I want to I thank everybody also who did actually comment on the previous uh, episodes. And some of the, a lot of the, I, I know I had at least uh, one or two comments talking about how this is just, this whole season is kind of one big movie. I mean, they're always kind of one big movie, but this one really does feel like one big movie. And again, I, I'm, I'm really disappointed that Amazon dropped all the episodes at once. Um, and I am still sticking to my guns on this that I will, after this season, no longer be doing episode to episode reviews on shows seasons that drop all at once. I'm not going to do that any longer for brand new seasons of shows. I will still go back and review uh, old shows episode to episode, but uh, I'm only going to be covering uh, week to week shows episode to episode. Any binge shows, bingeable shows will no longer be reviewed episode to episode. It's just not worth it for me. I'm not getting enough growth from them. Uh, I'm not getting enough subscribers for them. I'm 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 70. I'm I'm like something like 70 subscribers under my my video count. I have 70 more videos than I do subscribers, and I just I don't want to keep making tons and tons and tons of videos and never catching up to my own video count. So. If you are liking the content, please become a subscriber. Also, if you feel like donating to the channel, you can go to my Ko-Fi page at ko-fi.com slash smirkinggunreviews or my PayPal at paypal.me slash smirkinggunreviews. Uh, now that we've gotten all that crap out of the way and probably people have just fast-forwarded or clicked off, <laughs> let's talk about displacement. This is like the, like the day after tomorrow episode, except good. Like, this is the impending disaster episode that is, holy crap, has a very, very intense last couple of minutes that just made me go, oh, shit, we're about to lose a main character. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm mad or not that we didn't, but we have the great big explosion that was in the end of the last episode where an entire island just goes kablooey. And... This is a major catastrophic event that is going to send shockwaves, earthquakes, and a fucking tsunami uh, to just basically wipe out, like, like they said, like, a, most of the continent now is going to be underwater. To make things worse, after this event, whatever's on there, and it's we're talking protomolecule stuff here, is now preventing anything else like this happening again with any reactors because they said that basically 
the explosion was like a great big reactor explosion. So now all the ships that are above, all their reactors are turned off. They can still, they're still got power, but they can't turn their reactors on to move. So now they're just all out there floating in fucking space, which means that after a while their fuel's gonna run out and they are all gonna drop. Which also means that while Mercury and his group and Holden and Amos and the Belters who were gonna have the Rossi come down and all their other ships come down and get everybody off of there, now the ships won't go down there to get them off. <laughs> this is like it just kept being bad news after bad news after bad news. Then they send the shuttle, right? Mertry sends a shuttle. It I'm sitting there watching it like they are. And I just it just And I'm like, wait, did that thing just did that thing just that shot that was their shuttle, right? That's what I'm saying. I'm like, oh my god. And they're like, yeah, the shuttle, it's just gone. And not just the shuttle, but if you look right to where, to the, I believe, from the screen, right? Up over there, like a weatherman, uh, the moon is turning red, which means they're like, yeah, I think the moon's melting now, too. Okay, so the protomolecule apparently is... Thanks, Miller! That's basically all I could think of was, I mean, I know it's not just Miller being there, but, you know, whatever's going on, they're trying to prevent more explosions, but in preventing more explosions, now everybody is possibly going to die. Now, I know that that's, we're looking at worst case scenarios, you know, we're looking at doomsday scenarios, and I'm hoping that our plucky group of, you know, survivors <laughs> will somehow pull it off in the end. I mean, they got to get us to basically think all is lost before some sort of 11th hour miracle happens. But I don't know that yet. And I know that most of you guys have seen this by now, and so you get to watch me go, Oh good, oh God, we're all going to die. <laughs> also, Earth and everybody else, nobody can contact anyone. All the comms are down. It's basically blackout. So it's just all fucked. Anyway, also, Bobby and her thing on Mars with Isai. And like I said, you know, you can't trust the priest from The Sopranos. She's got her new gig here, helping him get all the contraband and stuff that basically are getting, like, you know, scrapped and sold off. They're stealing it all. And it's working out for her. It's working out, like, a little too well, and I'm really worried that Bobby is basically just going to become a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> but like, not. I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna go because she doesn't really get along with everybody. Isai doesn't seem to be like a murderer, but Lily, great name, right? Uh, Lily, she's the one that is gonna be the hothead in in all this. And they go to get this next big score, and Bobby's internal knowledge of things uh, lets uh, them know that when they go to their next job and they can't get in, she takes a barely, you know, a, a suit with no air out you know, onto the Mars surface and goes around and, and gets through and, and unlocks the door. But unfortunately, she runs out of air and one of the guards traps her in there and she runs out of air. And I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> but she comes to and it's Esai and his gang that have saved her. So... And he's all happy and telling her how good a job she did and everything. And I'm thinking to myself, great, you know, she's just going to be with them. I mean, this is, I don't know if this is in the books or not. But I mean, they needed, I, they, they at least wanted to have her character do something. And I just, I still hate that she's not with our core group of, of characters. But I feel like, I guess in this respect, they're trying to say, you know, what happens to... Uh, a military without a war and that's her side of this story so it's a necessary story I just wish that there was somebody else there that we know uh, as characters as a character that you know maybe Bobby could play off of or somebody that could help her in this situation she's all by herself maybe that's all she needs in the end I don't know it's all speculative 
but it's really kind of bothering me still. Um, so they decide to head to the ruins. It's the only place on Eilis that they can go to. And I just keep thinking to myself, man, those things don't, those doors don't seem to want to move, but they end up blowing them open, which is kind of a woof. Except it's just a little bitty hole. So again, you get the whole tense situation of how do we get everybody in there? Once we're all in there, how do we, you know, feed everybody? How do we take care of everybody? And Mercury's all over that saying basically to his people, it's them or us. It's not going to be us. You know, and, and through this also, he like leverages Holden a little bit on him too because he tells the Belters that he's going to do whatever he can. Mercury takes that as you're taking their claim. You need to tell them to drop all the lithium off. We're not going to help them. It's a lot. Also, there's that green stuff that's in Dr. Elvie's eye, which that can't be good either. And then even more meanwhile, we've got Ashford and Drummer. Now this is the part of, this is the subplot that I still am really, really digging, mostly because Kara G is a very good, I, I love both of these characters, but Kara G, oh my god. I just saw her in real life, well not in real life, but I saw her not as Drummer. Anyway, that, that doesn't matter how, that she's a beautiful, beautiful lady. Um, but I love their subplot because they're the ones that are trying to, you know, as OPA, they're trying to keep the peace. They're trying to keep things from getting worse between them and, and the inners. But she voted to let Marco live, and now Marco's out there already causing trouble because they've got the Tripoli coming saying, hey, there's a signal that got sent out to people I'm, that's, I'm not, I wasn't 100% on this. Wasn't 100% what was going on with this tight beam. If it was just a message or a laser that hit something or, or whatnot, I don't. I was a little bit lost on that. But now they have to go after Marco because they find out that the signal went to the MCRN uh, to Mars. They find it hard to believe that anybody on Mars would actually help Marco. And they also say that if you know they once they get word back to uh, like. Jefferson, uh, Dawes and um, oh, Coleman's character, It's his name is escaping me now, um, that they would be able to get all the, the help they need. But again, I still say, you know, this was a plot thing. Like, they could have just killed Marco and be done with it, but then what would we do with the character? How do we drag out that piece of drama? But now at least they're going after him to finally fucking kill this guy. Please, thank you. That's what I would like. But in the end, we get everybody to the ruins, right? And uh, everybody's inside the ruins and the tsunami hits. First, we have that shockwave that blows out the windows and kills everybody. And of course, we got that scene where there's just some little kid sitting there. Mommy and Daddy blew away. And I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> as soon as I heard the kid crying, I went... We're about to have one of those scenes, aren't we? Where we just find some kid crying. Uh, and I know I'm a heartless bastard, but I just I saw the kid there and Holden come up to him. Hey, where's your mommy and daddy? And they're gone. I'm just like, why are we talking about this? Can we please move along? Somebody just pass the kid off to somebody else so we can get the, get the just forget this. <laughs> so we get everybody inside of the ruins. They can't get the door closed. The tsunami is literally slamming its way out, and Holden, I'm like, oh god, he's going out there. He's going out there. Why are you going out there, Holden? He just said, and he even, you know, I don't know if the script was trying to fuck with me, or all of us, or whatever, but he's like, I don't plan on dying here, right? And I'm like, oh god, he's about to die here. I really thought that, I thought that was it. That was it. And he goes out there and he gets the leverage up and he just manages to fucking slip in there like just barely before they close it and and he's all right. But good God, I mean, I don't I don't want Holden to die. But they I almost felt like if he had, 
it would have made for a really powerful end of that episode. That's all I'm saying. Like, Or not knowing what happened to him and would Miller save him. But he'd have been crushed against that thing. So it was either he gets in that hole or Holden's dead. But it all signs to me were pointing towards Holden was going to die in that scene. Because it, it's they just set up all that kind of way that they talk in shows where somebody's foreshadowing their own death. You know what I'm saying? And they're so convinced, like, I'm not going to die here. And it's like, oh, yeah, you are. But he didn't. And I, in the end, I am happy that he isn't dead. And that's all we're really going to say. I, I honestly was trying to think of more things to say. I mean, it's a good episode. It is an intense episode. Bobby almost dies. Holden almost dies. This whole thing with the explosion coming after them with this ticking clock is really, really effective. The fact that all the ships can't get out of there, we still haven't solved that problem. So everything is like a, still a ticking clock. Because just because they didn't get killed by the tsunami doesn't mean that there isn't something inside the uh, ruins that couldn't kill them. Also, you got that green shit in people's eyes. Ship's going to be falling from the sky. Ashford and Drummer got to go after Marco, who's a fucking maniac. Bobby's hanging out with the goddamn Ocean's, you know, Eleven on Mars. And Avasarala doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> so... Holy crap, can't wait to get to episode 7. If you like this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe. You can find me on Twitter at reviews under uh, score gun. Uh, I'm really glad I'm wearing my Book of Mormon Hasa Diga Ibawa shirt while I was watching this episode. Because while I was watching this episode and some of it was happening, I was saying, I was thinking about what this shirt really means. Because damn, I was like, don't kill Holden! <laughs> Have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you on the next episode of The Expanse, Season 4. Bye.